Hi everybody, it's Dr. Tawari here. I thought I'd spend a couple of minutes talking about fat grafting. It's something that we get a lot of questions about. What is fat grafting? When do we use it? Well, fat grafting, unlike a deep flap, is liposuction, where we'll remove fat from saddlebags, thighs, hips, abdomen, those areas, and process that fat and re-inject it into the breast. So we've all heard of BBLs, Brazilian butt lifts. It's kind of similar. We're taking the fat and instead of injecting it into the buttock area, we're using it as a natural augmentation for the breast. And we find this is very common for patients that have had implant removal. So the on block patients, once, once they've had an implant removal, still want a natural fullness, still want some level of augmentation. That's a place where fat grafting comes in. We do a lot of fat grafting in our breast cancer patients who've undergone a deep flap. Oftentimes we'll fat graft in the cleavage area, maybe in the upper area. I always say the way God made us, we have a transition from the breast to the chest area. And after a deep flap or even an implant reconstruction, that transition has to be feathered out, made a bit more subtle, and fat grafting is really good for that. So that's what fat grafting is. How do we do it? Well, we'll liposuction those areas that I mentioned and then we'll process the fat. We use a system that I love. It's called the lipografter system, and it allows us to do it where the fat isn't traumatized, isn't exposed to the air. It's a real gentle way to treat the fat, and it's the best way that I've found to do it in 20 years of doing this stuff. And our fat graft survival is much higher. And that's really the key point is what percent of your fat survives? You want that number to be as high as possible, at least 50%. Half the fat does go away. Sometimes it can get a little bit hard. That's known as fat necrosis. And those are things that are important to be able to understand because as a patient gets mammograms, as she gets imaging for breast cancer, that fat necrosis can be a problem that happens less than 10% of the time, but that is something to be wary about. But fat grafting in general should really not have a lot of fat necrosis. And this lipografter system I found is the best way to do it. Now we're looking at some real exciting things to increase our fat graft survival rate. We're looking at PRP, which is taking a patient's own blood and harvesting stem cells through a centrifuge system and injecting that as part of the fat that we re-inject to increase our fat survival rate. There's some good literature out there that shows that PRP may increase your fat survival rate. We're also looking at some agents that are used in the hair transplant world to increase hair follicle growth. And it's something that is similar. Follicle uh, transplants like fat grafting are grafts. They don't have a blood supply to it. And these types of agents that have been shown to improve the survival of hair grafts can also increase the survival of fat grafts. So real exciting things that have improved our fat grafting survival rate. We're certainly seeing a lot more in patients who do not want an implant for augmentation, do not want an artificial prosthesis for breast reconstruction. So fat grafting is a really nice technique it's easy to do. The recovery for most folks is a week or two. You wear some compression garments where we do liposuction. Not a lot of downtime. Get back to work. Get back to your home life uh, pretty quickly. And it's a really nice technique for the right patient to give you a little bit more volume, a little bit more fullness. And we do it a lot.